Got another question for the acids, bases and pH playlist. So we're up to number 14 now. This one includes calculating the pH of a strong base, calculating an enthalpy change of reaction and calculating an enthalpy change of neutralisation. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. OK, so we'll make a start. So to calculate the pH of a strong base, we need to use the KW expression. We're told that it's a 298 Kelvin, so KW has that value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so it's going to fully dissociate. So if the concentration of the sodium hydroxide is 0.14 moles per decimeter cubed, so is the concentration of the hydroxide ion. So all we need to do is rearrange the KW expression for the H plus concentration. So you can see I've done that there. And then we just need to put the numbers in. So that gives an H plus concentration of 7.14 times 10 to the minus 14 moles per decimeter cubed. So we just need to minus log that to get the pH which to two decimal places comes out at 13.15. Moving on to part B, the first thing we've got to do is show that the sodium hydroxide was in excess. So the first thing we'll do is calculate the moles of each chemical involved in the reaction. So that was just two concentration times volume calculations. Remember, the volume's got to be in decimeters cubed. So we've got 0.04 moles of sulfuric acid, 0.0825 moles of sodium hydroxide. So if we think about the moles of sulfuric acid, we've got 0.04 moles of that. How many moles of sodium hydroxide would you need? You'd need double that, so you'd need 0.08. Well, we've got more than that, so the sodium hydroxide is in excess. Moving on to the next part, so we've got to calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction and then the enthalpy change of neutralisation. So I've just copied up the equation again and we've established that the sulfuric acid is obviously going to be the limiting reagent because all of its moles will react. Sodium hydroxide, we were told, is in excess. So the first thing I want to do is work out the energy released into the solution. So we're using Q equals mc delta T to do that. The 80 is the mass of the solution because we use 25 cm cubed of acid and 55 cm cubed of the sodium hydroxide multiplied by C multiplied by the temperature rise, which we were told was 13. So that's 4347 joules, divide by 1,000 to put it into kilojoules, 4.347 kilojoules. So to calculate the enthalpy change for reaction one, we take the Q value in kilojoules, divide by the moles. Which moles do we use? We use the limiting reagent. So we're going to divide 4.347 by 0.04 moles. So that comes out at minus, it's exothermic, remember, the temperature went up, minus 108.68 kilojoules per mole. So moving on to the last part of this question, the enthalpy change of neutralisation, well, that's all about the enthalpy change per mole of water formed. So we've got to think about how many moles of water are going to perform in this reaction. Well, our limit reagent is sulfuric acid, so we're going to get twice as many moles of water formed. So it's similar to this step here, but instead of dividing by 0 0.04, we're going to divide by 0 0.08, which gives an enthalpy change of minus 54.34 kilojoules per mole. In other words, half of that first answer. And for the last part, the student repeats the experiment using 50 cm cubed of the same concentration acid and 110 cm cubed of the same concentration sodium hydroxide. So what have they done? They've doubled the volume of each chemical, kept the concentrations the same. So they've used twice as many moles. So because of that, twice as much energy is going to be released into the solution. So is the temperature rise going to be double? No, it's not, because the solution has double the volume or double the mass. So the, the double the energy is trying to heat up twice as much solution. So the temperature change is going to be the same.